Could a Ukrainian hovercraft get through dense Russian minefields? The answer might surprise you. One of the biggest challenges Ukraine has faced when going on the offensive along the contact line is dealing with Russian minefields. The Russians have gone mine crazy, laying even more mines than the already ridiculous Soviet military mine laying doctrine provides. So could hovercraft be the answer? Hey friends, Wes O'Donnell here, veteran of both the US Army and the US Air Force, and I speak bad Russian because Mudro Izuchat Protivnika. I started to work on a video today about Ukrainian engineers using spider boots to help navigate Russian minefields in Ukraine. And then I started thinking about why the unique design of spider boots saves lives and how that might apply to vehicles. Spider boots may sound like a magical quest item from Dungeons and Dragons, but this unique footwear made for combat engineers may be the key to saving Ukrainian lives. Spider Boots' four pod tipped spider legs increase the horizontal standoff range of a detonating mine. The resulting air gap significantly reduces the energy directly transmitted from the blast in the ground to the soldier by allowing more of the blast energy to vent sideways. This is often enough to save feet, legs, and the groin from a blast discharging from directly underneath. So are there any military vehicles that have a standoff range from the ground like spider boots? Why yes, there are. Hovercraft. This is actually one of the plot points in the 2002 James Bond movie Die Another Day, where the legendary British spy drives a hovercraft through the minefields of the North and South Korean demilitarized zone. I actually forgot about this uh, until I started researching this video. It's amazing how much you can forget in 21 years. Of course, James Bond is fiction, especially fantastical fiction during the Pierce Brosnan era. So how would it work in real life? Well, in 2023, Russia sowed over 900 miles of Ukrainian front line with tens of thousands of mines. As the Ukrainian counteroffensive went on that year, soldiers were reporting as many as five mines per 10 square feet. That staggering number of both anti-personnel and anti-tank mines has made Ukraine the most mined country in the world and transformed Ukraine's heartland into patches of wasteland that will take decades of work and billions of dollars to undo. The Russian military uses a variety of mines in Ukraine, but they all essentially use one of four triggering mechanisms. Their anti-personnel mines, for use against soldiers, use either a pressure switch or a seismic detector. A smaller number of mines use tripwires to trigger, but these are much rarer. In recent months, we've seen Russia use the POM-3 medallion anti-personnel mine, which can be seeded from miles away in much the same way that Ukraine used the American-made artillery-fired remote anti-armor mine system, or RAMS, earlier in the war. Once the POM-3 lands, a seismic rod sensor is forced into the ground, and on sensing a suitable seismic signature, the base unit ejects a fragmentation charge into the air that contains metal fragmentation rings that detonate, sending shrapnel out to a lethal radius of about 12 yards. Another Russian anti-personnel mine, the PFM-1, or Butterfly Mine, uses a hydraulic pressure fuse that's triggered when the mine is stepped on or inadvertently kicked. On the anti-tank side, Russia uses several varieties that use either pressure plates or a magnetic target sensor, or both in some cases, in case a western tank track doesn't directly roll over the mine the device will still sense the tank's magnetic disturbance. Anti-vehicle mines can also be triggered by a tilt rod, which is a rod about three feet high that if tilted back, say, by driving over it, will explode the mine. Although Russia doesn't appear to be using these in Ukraine, at least not as of the making of this video. So how much pressure and how much of a magnetic disturbance will set off a Russian mine? Well, this varies widely between them, but one thing is certain, these anti-tank mines were designed to defeat a very narrow range of Western military vehicles. 
So what happens when you introduce a vehicle outside of that narrow range? At its simplest, hovercraft are vehicles that ride on a cushion of air. Specifically, hovercraft use blowers to produce a large volume of air below the hull, or air cushion, that is slightly above atmospheric pressure. The pressure difference between the higher pressure air below the hull and the lower pressure ambient air above it produces lift, which causes the hull to float above the running surface. All modern hovercraft have a flexible skirt that keeps the air from escaping from beneath the craft, making them more efficient. And because they ride on air, hovercraft can travel over both land and water. They're propelled, in some cases, by giant fans in the rear for thrust, but sometimes smaller hovercraft use ducting to split the air between downward force to hover and rear force for thrust. So, can hovercraft defeat landmines? Well, here's where we combine how Russian mines are triggered with how hovercraft work. Since the vast majority of Russian mines are pressure switches, the deciding factor will be how much air pressure small hovercraft blow toward the ground. And is that pressure enough to trigger a Russian mine's pressure sensor? Mythbusters tested this out with a small one-person 600-pound hovercraft through a minefield. What they discovered is that mines rely on point pressure. And even though their hovercraft weighed 600 pounds, its weight was distributed evenly throughout the cushion of air. But we don't have to rely on Mythbusters. In a large study by the Royal Navy, they claimed that their hovercraft did not generate enough pressure to trigger pressure-activated anti-tank mines. However, they also noted that a magnetic trigger would still be set off by any sufficiently large vehicle with a significant amount of steel in its structure and with a typical engine construction. And what about seismic triggers? Well, the hovercraft is still exerting its full weight on the ground, just spread out over a larger area than a wheeled or a tracked vehicle. But as anyone who has stood next to a hovercraft can attest, it's quite loud. And some of those vibrations are transmitted directly into the ground. It's entirely likely that the U.S. military has already performed research in this area, and the answer is probably sitting in a low-level classified report somewhere I'll see what I can find with some freedom of information requests and report back if I find anything interesting. So the seismic piece is still an unanswered question for now, but the last question remaining is how hovercraft would respond to smaller anti-personnel mines. These mines would be much more likely to be triggered, in my opinion, uh, since their pressure threshold is much lower, three pounds in most cases. This is where the hovercraft's ground offset comes in much like the spider boots at the top of the video. Because the small blast of an anti-personnel mine would not be in direct contact with the hull of the hovercraft, the hovercraft would likely only suffer minimal damage. After all, if the small cushion of air beneath spider boots is enough to save a soldier's life and limbs, then the much larger standoff cushion of a hovercraft could plausibly make it through a minefield. My take is that small unit hovercraft can and should be considered for use on the Ukrainian battlefield. Besides, the Ukrainians are good at repurposing a wide range of equipment and vehicles to serve their purposes in this war. They would think of ingenious ways to implement hovercraft that we just haven't thought of yet. Any and every idea is on the table to help Ukraine eject their invaders from Ukrainian lands. By the way, Ukraine already has some hovercraft for use, like the Tornado F-50 police hovercraft. Let's get them some more. And let the Ukrainian warfighters decide how best to implement them. That's it for now. Subscribe if you're not already. It really helps the channel grow. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to the heroes. Slava Ukrainian.